In their biography, Tiger Woods, 2018, American authors and journalists Jeff Benedict and Armin Katayan meticulously detail the life and journey of the renowned professional golfer Tiger Woods. Their comprehensive approach involved interviewing over 250 individuals and delving into more than 20 books about Woods. Despite Woods extending an offer for an on-the-record interview, Benedict and Katayan respectfully declined, citing journalistic integrity concerns regarding the conditions set by Woods. In response, Woods opted not to engage with the authors off the record. Kitayan expressed a desire to answer the fundamental question, who is Tiger Woods, which drove the writing of the book. The narrative commences the day after Thanksgiving in 2009 with Woods's car accident involving a fire hydrant and a tree, preceded by tabloid allegations of an extramarital affair. Subsequently, numerous women came forward with similar claims prompting Woods to publicly acknowledge and apologize for his infidelity, leading to a hiatus from professional golf. The scandal also resulted in the termination of endorsement deals with several corporate partners, including AT&T, General Motors, and Gatorade. Benedict and Katayan methodically trace Woods' life story, starting from his, his origins in Cypress, California, in 1975. Introduced to golf by his father, Earl, before the age of two, Woods showcased remarkable talent early on. Earl, a Navy veteran, had access to the Navy golf course in Los Alamitos, where he nurtured Woods's burgeoning skills. By the age of five, Woods had already garnered attention, appearing in Golf Digest magazine and engaging in a putting competition with comedian Bob Hope on television's The Mike Douglas Show. Benedict and Katayan meticulously investigate and scrutinize various claims circulating in the media regarding Woods's upbringing. One notable focus is Earl's accounts of the racial challenges Tiger encountered at school and on the golf course. Among these anecdotes is a disturbing story where, allegedly, a group of sixth graders tied Woods to a tree on his kindergarten debut and defaced his clothes with racial epithets. While acknowledging the pervasive reality of racism faced by many African Americans, the authors express skepticism about this specific tale especially regarding the detail of spray-painted words on Woods' attire. Through their research, Benedict and Katayan found no corroborating evidence from the kindergarten teacher or district administrator, nor any official report filed by Earl, despite his claims. They suggest that Earl, who confronted racism throughout his life, sought to underscore a narrative of racial adversity in Tiger's story, often diverging from his son's perspective. The complex relationship between Earl and Tiger holds significant significance for Benedict and Katayan. They observe how sports journalists frequently overlooked the dysfunction apparent in their bond, fearing it would detract from the aura surrounding Woods' phenomenal ascent. For instance, in 1994, following Woods' historic win as the youngest U.S. amateur title holder at 18, Earl's candid remarks to a People magazine reporter were omitted from publication at the editor's discretion, despite the reporter's intention to include them, revealing a pattern of selective narrative shaping in Tiger's story. Benedict and Katayan assert that Earl's often austere and exacting manner toward his son contributed to shaping Woods into a person lacking fundamental decency. They highlight Woods's controversial decision following his victory at the 1997 Masters Tournament at age 21 to forgo attending a Jackie Robinson tribute alongside President Bill Clinton, citing disruptions to his vacation plans. Katayan also delves into Woods's strained relationship with former close friend Mark O'Mara, coaxing O'Mara to share his feelings about their estranged bond. O'Mara expressed deep hurt over Woods' absence at his induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2015, remarking, Sooner or later, you have to be a human being. In the years preceding Earl's death in 2006, his life spiraled into further turmoil, marked by indulgence in pornography, the presence of sex toys, and requests for sexual favors, as recounted by a former employee who described it as a house of horrors. Despite the disheartening revelations surrounding Woods and his father, Benedict and Katayan find themselves compelled to acknowledge and celebrate Woods' extraordinary talent and his significant cultural and athletic impact on the sport of golf. For instance, upon winning his first Masters, a tournament historically devoid of Black participation until 1975, 
Woods is moved by the sight of numerous Black individuals from the Augusta staff gathering on the lawn and veranda, a poignant moment underscoring his groundbreaking achievements. Described by The New Yorker as comprehensive, propulsive, packed with incident, and unsparing, Tiger Woods offers a multifaceted exploration of its subject's life, delving into both his triumphs and shortcomings with candid scrutiny. I hope you found this video enjoyable. If so, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you.